Hey, welcome to the support video for the review of the learning platforms that you've been looking at this summer. So, Mrs. O'Neill set you a task to review some of the educational websites that you've been on as part of your revision and catch up and just general wider learning over the summer weeks when we haven't been in front of you guys. Um, so, I really had to get my head around the idea that this is a review not of a film. I mean, we can, um, we've probably practiced quite a lot of film reviews together, but um, reviewing a series of educational websites was, was a little bit different, a bit, a bit more of a conundrum really. So I produced a little pack for you. Um, if you don't have that handy in front of you, then in the description there's a link to my test shop, but it's a free download, so you can have a look at that um, if you're not on Google Classroom. So, reviewing. Let's just think about why we as people might read a review. We read a review as a reader because we have needs. We want really to um, save ourselves time. We don't want to waste our time, we don't want to um, waste our money on things that aren't worth our money or aren't worth our time. Uh, we want to know where to go to get the best answers for what we're trying to achieve. So with that in mind, we can maybe start the basis of our review. We also need to think about the fact that you're going to be writing for each other. So you're going to be writing for a group of your peers. They are your age. And um, from my experience in classrooms, uh, teenagers are, are very quick to tell you when things are really boring. So please make sure that as a teen that you are willing to entertain other teens within your review. So reviews aren't just informative, they also serve to entertain because if we make people laugh and we're entertaining, people tend to believe us more. So they will believe what we say about, you know, go and visit BBC Bite Size because it's fantastic. Uh, and they might believe us um, more when we say, you know, absolutely don't go on this particular website, you'd be wasting your time. So with that in mind, let's just have a look at how we can break down this review because I want this to be quite a, a quick kind of impactful video for you. Um, the exam board that we do, which is Educast, uh, you get half an hour to write a piece of transactional writing. So obviously it's time limited, um, but we want to show that there's um, all, all of the organisation of a review within that half hour write. So it needs to start somewhere, develop, and it needs to conclude properly. And we need to show that we can sustain those skills as well. So that leads us to using a five paragraph structure. So we can introduce, we can have main idea one, main idea two, main idea three, a paragraph each, and then we conclude in some way that is appropriate to the form. So our form today is a review. Um, so let's have a look. Paragraph one. In your pack, it recommends um, that you hook your target audience in. So you're gonna be writing for teens and you're gonna be reviewing these educational platforms. So it might be websites, um, but also it might be things that we use in school, for example, like um, GCSE Pod. So it doesn't necessarily have to be websites, or you might have read a cracking great book, for example. Um, so anything that you've learned from, or um, Mr. Tyree might have set a really brilliant piece on Google Classroom, so you can review that, for example. I know he's been setting up a lot of quizzes for you that have certainly kept us entertained as an English department. So, paragraph one then, we're gonna be hooking in our fellow teens. So we need to be lively, don't we? We need to speak to our teens, um, as teens, uh, not to kind of the adults in them, we need to appeal to them as teenagers um, and persuade them that, you know, by reading this review, they're going to be, as I put in the pack, saving time, saving effort, um, but you've got to catch their attention within those first few sentences and I would recommend speaking directly to them. Um, a little trick that I know as a writer is to kind of set a scene. You imagine 
it's been over the summer. What do teenagers normally do in the six week holidays? You know, most of them don't spend nine to five doing their school learning, okay? we I know we have some real keen ones uh, and some people will do, but the majority don't, which is why very few people get those really high grades, those, those grade nines, because it does take an awful lot of dedication. Um, so set the scene for the majority of your audience. So what have they been doing over the summer? So you will see on your pack that I've suggested starting something like it's Sunday night and school starts again tomorrow. You were meant to spend the summer soaking up all that good learning juice on a million different websites, but instead you, and then just, you know, you were, you know, bathing on a, on a beach, although I am speaking during, um, lockdown 2020 so maybe you didn't spend it on the beach but you know what were you likely to be doing lots and lots of people will have been on ps4 for example lots and lots of people have, have, will have met others in parks and you know had a social time and families birthdays blah, blah, blah. what else do you do that is you know great fun for you just consuming netflix box set after netflix box set so set that scene so that they your audience thinks oh yeah that sounds like me this this article this review must be for me it sounds like my sort of summer okay so that's a lively way to start other ideas you could set yourself up as an expert if you've done the legwork then you know you're the expert aren't you and you're going to be sharing that with other people so Again, I'm just reading from the pack here. Uh, it could sound something like, uh, well done for finding me here. I have all the latest on which websites to hit up for an educational dose of English and those which deserve a smash on the dislike button. Stick around because, and then my recommendations to you as writers is, you have to think about why would they stick around? What is it that you're offering? Um, do you want to save them time? Um, do you want to give them information about um, where they could go that would be of most interest, most challenge, most entertaining websites, uh, those that deliver a lot of information quickly. So I know that in GCSE pod, one of the real selling points of it is that the little pods only last a few minutes and all of us can find a few minutes, can't we? You know, walk into school, just pop your headphones in and that's the beauty of it, isn't it? So what is it that you are going to be offering, which means this should still keep and stick with your review. Okay, so just to finish off paragraph one, my last recommendation is um, just as you're finishing up the paragraph, what is it that they should be doing now? Should they be sticking around and reading the rest of your review? Of course they should. So tell them that. Um, are you going to give them a direct instruction? Drop that donut and pick up your pen because, well, why? Because you're going to recommend the most amazing things to visit, uh, the quickest things to visit, the things that will save their life in an emergency, last minute revision or stuff that you can learn for the longer haul. What is it that you're doing? Okay, so that will help you write paragraph one. Remember, we're only dedicating five minutes to paragraph one. And then, our next three paragraphs are going to look at a different uh, website each because I think it's pretty tough to just stick with one website or one education platform. Um, so my idea is three platforms and just review them in three separate paragraphs. But we can um, shake up those paragraphs, shake it up by here's one I loved, Here's one to avoid, and then obviously for your third one, you can make a choice of your own. You might decide, I won't do a website for this one, I'll do GCSE, just GCSE, um, pod, or, you know, I'm going to review one of Mrs. Shuttleworth's videos. Please be kind, I'm sure you will. Um, okay, so... You'll see on the pack that in paragraph two, I've asked you something to kind of get your head around what you're going to put in paragraph two. So I've put the next part of your review needs to introduce the first website. Start with one that you liked. You can start with one you hated if you want. It's up to you. Um, some things I've suggested that need to be there because you need to inform as well as entertain and review. Introduce the name. Um, 
of maybe the person who whose platform it is, uh, like Mr. Bruff, for example. You know, Mr. Bruff works at Sansa Sansa School and he is famous for uh, where's his website, what are its main selling points, is it easy to navigate, um, what's the value to you as a GCSE English student, what makes it unique, why does he stand out amongst all the other English teachers who provide online lessons. So those are some of the things that I thought you might want to put into that. Um, and then I provided you with a little exemplar and then I'll talk through why the exemplar is working and um, that'll help you a little bit more than the pack does itself about how to, to create something that is really successful as a review. Okay, so my exemplar reads if you're just starting out in the fabulous world of sewing, by the way, I, I didn't review education platforms because I had a strong suspicion you might just go, that's great, I'm going to write that review. So I didn't do that. Um, I imagined myself as a learner of sewing and I reviewed some um, sewing teaching platforms instead. But the techniques that I use you can certainly magpie from me and switch them into education websites. Okay, let's start that exemplar again then. If you're just starting out in the fabulous world of sewing, you would be a fool not to visit the amazing Benjamin Upton at www.sosimpleitsilly.com. This website is a must for anyone starting out in the world of sewing and let's face it, Things can get complicated very quickly when you're learning to sew. However, Benjamin keeps it ridiculously easy and he will have you running up a pair of tracksuit bottoms in the time it takes to thread a needle. Okay, so that's an exaggeration. It might take an afternoon, but you won't put a needle wrong under his careful teaching. The bonus is that he has a very soothing voice. So you will feel relaxed even when you have to reach for the unpicker because you've sewn the pants back to front. If you're starting out as a sewer, this website is a must. Uh, check out his blog post too for tips on how to style your newly made track pants up. He's worth your time! Exclamation mark. Okay, so as I've read that to you, what I've heard is that I've got a repetition actually that I don't necessarily want. I'm going to leave it in there because I want to give you an idea of live writing. In the exam, you've got half an hour, you crash, crash, crash on the computer. Um, and when we're live writing, you know, that's the sort of thing as we read it back that we might want to edit out. So I think what I might do actually, having said I'll leave it, I think I might do like a strikeout. Um, so that you can see that as I proofread, I could see that I'd repeated. And what I've repeated is, um, the website is a must, because earlier I said this website is a must. Okay, so I would want more variety than that, just it just gives me an opportunity to offer a different bit of language, doesn't it? Okay, so that's how my exemplar goes. Now, this is why you might be able to steal some things from me. So, um, if you are just starting out, so it's scenario building. If you, if you want to succeed in your GCSE English, and let's face it, who doesn't want to succeed in an exam? We all like to come out um, with, with, you know, feeling fairly shiny, don't we? If we're going to have to do the exam, we do want to come out with something that we're proud of. So you can set that scene. If you dot dot dot, it's a great way to start that paragraph. Uh, you would be a fool not to visit. That's a stealable phrase, isn't it? And then you can put in whichever website it is. You Again, you can crib this website is a must for and then describe who would benefit from that mainly. You know, for people who are lazy and want things delivered quickly, the people who want that extra challenge, the people who, would, who are aiming for a grade seven, eight or nine, uh, for people who find some websites really far too complicated, this really breaks it down into bite-sized chunks. You know, you decide who um, it's a must for. So there's a little thing that you can steal. I use some nice, uh, <laughs> I'm describing my own work as nice, which um, is a little bit egotistical, but 
one of the things that does work in a review is they should really sound like you're speaking directly to the person. So if you've got some, the cold colloquialisms where you write as though you are speaking, um, not all of the time, but just every now and again, I've put one in, in here. So this website is a must for anyone starting out in the world of sewing. And and then there's this pa these parenthetic commas, let's face it, that's like a conversational tone, isn't it? Okay, so that's why it's in there. Okay. Strictly speaking, in a piece of formal writing, I would not have that. But a review is not, in this case, formal. So I am going to make it conversational in tone. Steal it if you need to. Um, so let's face it, things get complicated very quickly when you learn to sew, full stop. However, so always a nice little discourse marker there. Um, however, ben, Benjamin keeps it ridiculously easy. So I'm talking about the person who um, leads the website, their kind of personality, how I relate to them. You can do that too. He will have you running a pair of tracksuit bottoms in the time it takes to thread a needle. So that's an exaggeration, isn't it? Deliberately, because it's one of our rhetorical techniques. So exaggerate. What will they have you doing in no time at all? And then I go on to admit it was an exaggeration. Okay, so that's an exaggeration. Um, it might take an afternoon. Okay, but look, at, it gives me the opportunity to use those dashes, doesn't it? More variety in my punctuation, which is, you make it easy for the examiner to give their marks away to you. Um, so carry on, but you won't put a needle wrong under his careful teaching. So normally the phrase is, you won't put a foot wrong. So I've swapped it, I'm being placed playful with language so if you're looking at an educational site it's not going to be you won't put a foot wrong you won't put a pen wrong you won't put a verb wrong you won't put a noun wrong you know have some play about with it the bonus is so what is the bonus of the website to start your sentence the bonus is um, and then the bonus for me was that i'd made up obviously that this guy had a, a soothing uh, voice um, so you'll feel relaxed even when you have to reach for the unpicker because you've sewn the pants on back to front. So my attempt at humour, you know, attempts at humour in writing, we're not expecting people to laugh out loud, but you're just giving the examiner an opportunity to go, yeah, they've tried to entertain, haven't they? They'll tick it and it will become part of the credit that you're given. Okay. Um, I use that phrasing again, if you are, because now I'm summing up. And sometimes summing up is about where we started off. Just remind them. Um, but that's where I ended up doing that repetition of the uh, this website is a must. Uh, I'm going to strike that through right now while we talk about it. If I can. Yes. Uh, and then I'll put in a substitute sentence of some sort. But I'm going to leave the strike out there just to show you how things do change. Check out. Nice imperative. You need to do this, okay? You need to do it in your writing and you're telling your your person reading your review, you need to do this. So uh, check out his blog post too uh, for tips on how to style, blah, blah, blah. So what else is available on the site? Are there other blogs to watch? Are there tutorials? Are there free downloads that make up a little booklet on revising? You know, make it up. What would make it sound exciting, yeah? Uh, you know, if you're basing these on genuine websites, which I think is the idea that we have from Mrs. O'Neill, then, you know, have a look what else do they have? Do they have little quizzes that you can do? And then I always like to, to end a paragraph, most paragraphs really in transactional writing with a really short sentence, um, because it gives me an opportunity to use a short sentence, because we often forget, we tend to go for seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 words in a sentence, and that gets really monotonously boring. So, he's worth your time. And that gave me an opportunity to use an exclamation mark as well. Um, so, the examiner can tick lots and lots and lots there. So that's what I recommend for paragraph two. So paragraph three will be your main idea two. Move on to a different website. So in the one that I've exemplared, what I've gone on to do is look at a website that I really didn't like, I, I, uh, I didn't respond to at all. Um, 
what I've suggested is if you don't like something, it, that's all sorts of opportunities in your writing. So on your pack, it says that if you don't like something, it's a great opportunity to use humour, exaggeration, the rule of three, irony tone, which will probably be mocking, won't it? Sneering, ridiculing. Oh, for goodness sake, if this woman thinks that she can produce a video on how to write a review, she's absolutely mistaken. Yeah, so get those sort of tones in. I'm sure you will say, this woman is amazing at um, helping me write reviews. I jest. Uh, rhetorical questions. Okay, so here's the exemplar. Again, what I did so that you can't rely on me too much and you have to stretch your brains because that's the way to make it stick, isn't it? When you have to struggle for it, we remember it better. Um, I've done mine on a made up sewing website you will do yours on a genuine education platform of course okay so this is how the paragraph reads in the pack looking to waste your time this summer well look no further than the website www.allthingsbuttons.com this website is the website to visit if you feel that you have too much time on your hands and you've lost interest in ever doing anything that is of value or interest you ever again so you can hear the sneer you in the tone um, and the irony in that tone as well this website promises learning laughter and limitless tips I wanted to go for a triple L but couldn't quite I'll talk through that more in a moment sounds great doesn't it again ironic tone however beware the tutorials are tedious, the blog is boring and the lin links are limp. If you're looking to improve your sewing skills, you will be better off spending time trying to thread the needles on a hedgehog. They may have called the site All Things Buttons, but really it should be called All Things Pants. Avoid like the plague. Okay, it's a little bit more fun in that review, isn't it? But you can hear it's quite speedy because remember, I've got half an hour, haven't I, to get this done. So let's just pick that apart a little bit and why it works and what you might want to magpie from me so looking to waste your time this summer it's really great to start a paragraph with your topic sentence as a question it's engaging it intrigues it hooks that reader um because people are going to go no i'm not <laughs> i don't want to waste my time this summer tell me tell me how to avoid that so they're going to read on um the well now, when I sat this exam to help you guys and find out what these examiners were after, <laughs> certainly in my creative pros, they didn't they didn't like that sort of beginning and in the transactional actually. I think it's such a shame because in an in a lively informal piece where you're trying to get colloquial started the, the tone, I think it helps, but they underlined it. So it's buyer beware, isn't it? Um, I've started to tell students to leave them out, which would mean that this sentence reads, look no further than the website, but that doesn't quite make sense. Anyway, that was my experience of, of the exam. Um, so, you know, take your pick. Um, look no further than the website, and then I gave the website because I'm being informative, aren't I? This website is the website to visit if you feel and then I went for the humour. So this was where you can get playful. Um, so for me, I don't like having my time wasted. So I imagined, if I don't like having my time wasted, probably other people don't. So let's suggest that if they do, this is the one to visit. Uh, too much time on your hands, lost interest in never doing anything that is of value or interest you ever again. So you can hear the exaggeration, you can hear the irony, you can hear the mocking tone. Um, but equally within that, there's the information that it's not interesting, it's time wasting. So I am still being informative, just in creative ways. So um, looking again at what you might want to steal. This website promises is a nice little... Um, sentence opening isn't it and then i went for the triple learning laughter and limitless tips i did try to go for learning laughter and but i couldn't think of anything that began with l so that would have just been one neat thing so sometimes it doesn't work out you've got to make sense haven't you even if you want to use the technique so learning laughter and i went for limitless i had an adjective in in front of tips that began with l um so probably an examiner would tick there just to to visualize that oh using the rule of three fantastic 
Okay, so, uh, and then in the middle of paragraphs, I do like to go for a short sentence. This one here is a rhetorical question. Sounds great, doesn't it? Okay. It's just that little breezer in the middle of a, a paragraph is, is really welcome for your reader. And then I went for a second short one. However, it's a nice discourse marker. And then it was just that imperative verb, beware, which helped me then use a valid exclamation mark. Okay. Don't ever use an exclamation mark on the end of a really long sentence because that isn't an exclamation. That's a description or an explanation, isn't it? So exclamations are exclamations. They're punchy. Okay, so if you find yourself wanting to put it on the end of a long sentence, forget it. That's not a punch. Create yourself a punchy sentence. Okay, and then I went with another triple. The tutorials are tedious. So TT, I'm alliterating. The blog is boring. BB, I'm alliterating within my rule of three. The links are limp. Um try if you're using a triple to put the one that you want the reader to take most notice of as the last one so the one that's most impactful let me just get rid of my low battery um if you're looking to improve your sewing skills you'd be better off spending time trying to thread the needles on a hedgehog so a little bit of humor never went to miss did it they may have called the site all things buttons but really it should be called all things pants so the should be this actually this that kind of nice balance gives you a nice compound sentence doesn't it so the examiners are looking for a variety in your sentence structures so there's the excuse to use the compound sentence um and then avoid like the plague so i'm just because i've just told you not to use exclamation marks maybe that is a little bit long so I'm just, because I'm proofreading as I teach with you guys. Oh, it doesn't like that. Okay. Um, and then that instruction, avoid like the plague, has the um, exclamation mark on it. So there's two. There's one that I liked, there's one that I didn't like. Um, and I've given you some tips on how to use rhetorical devices within there. Paragraph four, just use the same thing again, one of the two, but with different content. I'll mix it up with, well, you know what? This website does have some positives, but actually these are the negatives. So you could kind of produce a more balanced. Here's one I loved, here's one I hated. Here's one that's worthy in this way, but not in this way, okay? Uh, paragraph five, so in our five paragraph structure, we need to be concluding and in film, um, not film reviews, because we're not writing a film review. In reviews, we do need to round off, it, you know, sum it up in some way. So I've suggested here in your pack, um, why engaging in whole learning is important, best ways to find out about it. You mentioned the drawbacks of sites that you have to have a login for, the fact that we might forget those logins, for example. So some of the pitfalls of just learning online anyway, or some of the joys of learning online. Um, and then star ratings are always nice, aren't they? I like to have fun with my star ratings. I don't just go, oh, star rating, four stars, because in actual fact, although that might follow the format, it's not particularly sophisticated, is it? So you could get some marks for a sophisticated star um, rating. So if you look on the pack, because I've reviewed two websites, I've given you the website name. This website deserves all the stars in the galaxy, so a little bit more playful. And then that one that I didn't like, forget the stars, a 10 watt light bulb is brighter. Okay, so have some fun. Don't just go, mm, here's the star rating, and then just draw yourself four stars, because you've missed an opportunity if you do. Right, so that's how to write your review. It's taken me nearly half an hour. You're gonna go away and write for half an hour now. So wishing you all the best of luck with that. I am sure you're gonna get into those magical, magical grades that are beyond your target uh, if you follow these instructions. Okay, keep safe and uh, see you guys real soon. Don't forget, subscribe. There's gonna be loads more of this uh, and smash the like. Okay, thanks guys, bye.